Welcome back to the Educator.com's Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 in-depth course. And in this video and a few more after this, we're going to go over Adobe Encore. That is a Blu-ray, DVD, Flash website uh, output program. Um, this is the introduction to it. And... We're going to go over a few things inside of Encore. And the first thing we're going to go over is the workflow. The Adobe Encore workflow is um, pretty close to the Premiere Pro. But since you're making a, a DVD or a Blu-ray or a website, there's um, some different stuff you have to do. Let's go over exactly what that is. We have gathering assets. That's the same as Premiere. You want to make sure you have everything you need for your uh, disk or your website. The generating menus, um, you can either use the built-in um, content that comes with Encore or you can create your own. We're actually going to create our own in, in this series of videos. Setting up your navigation, which you don't have in Premiere, you basically just make a sequence and output those sequences. And then, like Premiere, you're going to export your project, but you're not going to export it directly using Media Encoder. You're going to let Encore uh, call up whatever encoding it needs to, to get done inside of um, uh, the Media Encoder. So, that workflow here is a... Just like the previous one we did for Premiere and for Prelude, it's a general outline. You don't have to follow it exactly. You might not get your menus uh, set up or all of your assets set up. And you're already setting up your navigation through either direct links or through playlists or uh, some other way. You might already be setting that up. And then you might get your assets for your menus Later on, and you create your menus. You might have um, generic menus in there that you'll replace later with your custom menus. Now let's go over some terminology. And uh, before I go uh, over some terminology, let me send this project I have. The, the music video one, the steady project, uh, progress. Um, between the previous video and this one, I added some chapter markers in here. Uh, the second one here is Blue Haze. This one is Two for Singing. This one is Sepia Mood. This one is Green with Envy. And the first one here, Music Start. Now, when we get to the chapter markers in Encore, you'll see that these follow you over to Encore, these chapter markers. Let me go ahead and we'll go to the file and we'll export, I mean, uh, we'll go to dynamic link and we'll send to Encore. And that will start Adobe Encore. And just a few seconds here, it'll ask us what we want to name our project. And it defaults to untitled. So let's put uh, music video. And it will save it here. We can change it if we want. But we're going to save it here. And we're going to output this as... Uh, well, let me go through and show you both of these. If you choose Blu-ray, you can have either NTSC or PAL. When we went over the television standards before, that's what that that is. And then you have your default transcode settings. So if you have Blu-ray selected and you come in here, you'll see that you have uh, 15 megabits per second all the way up to 40. Now if this is a static disk, there's no reason not to have 40 as your maximum. But if you are burning this along with a bunch of other files and you know you're going to be adding even more files to this, um, you can change the the uh, setting here. I usually keep it at 40 as I have no reason to uh, try to squeeze it down. 
Then your video transcoding, you either have MPEG-2 or H.264. You leave it at H.264. And then this one, you can set the frame size for your Blu-ray. And Blu-ray supports all four of these different frame sizes. You can have standard definition video on there. And you can fit a whole lot of standard definition video on a Blu-ray disc. Uh, we're going to do 1280 by 720 because that's the closest to the source material that I have, this here. This uh, music video is 960 by 540. And you notice there it's uh, 30 frames a second. So we're going to change this to 29.97, which most closely resembles that frame size. And it looks like it'll automatically change it to 24 frames a second if it's 1280 by 720, which is fine. We don't have to worry about it. And then Dolby Digital... Uh, that's the AC3 codec. We're going to keep it at Dolby Digital. It uses a little bit less space for the audio. Uh, the PCM is uncompressed. If you want it uncompressed, uh, you can have it uncompressed. It'll use up more space, about five times as much space for the audio, but it's not really that much. But I'm just keeping it at Dolby Digital. On the Blu-ray side, or on the DVD side, uh, all of these are set because it's DVD. It's it's immutable here. The only thing you can change is the maximum bit rate, and you can have anywhere from 6 to 9.4, and there's no reason not to keep it at the maximum. It's just kind of pointless to have it less. And then the audio transcoding, again, we have Dolby Digital and PCM, but they also have MPEG-2, MP2 files, MPEG-1 layer 2. Um, that's kind of like an MP3, but it's the the uh, previous deprecated version of it. So it's MPEG-1 layer 2. So it's basically an M .mp2 file. But we're going to keep this one at Dolby Digital 2 as the default. And we're looking for Blu-ray. We have a 40. And we have all these others. Say we'll click OK. Now, the television standard, you could set it again. Um, over on the advanced, we only have one player available. Um, I've never gone to the advanced and needed to change the player that's here. So you probably won't either. And then, uh, as you can see here, you can change the authoring mode later, which uh, we can do it either Blu-ray, DVD, or Flash website. And we can just tell it which version we want later on in the build menu. So let's click OK. It will create our project here. Now let's go through some terminology. Um, our project is just like our project in Premiere. It's the exact same uh, thing that we have. Um, uh, it holds all of the assets that we're going to use in our project. And uh, we can also, over here they call them folders, but that's the same as the bin over in Premiere. We have a menu, a pop-up menu, which is used for Blu-ray discs. We can create a new timeline, a slideshow, a playlist, a chapter playlist. Now, the playlist we're going to go over in a later video, and they're very powerful. You can use um, just a short amount of space on your disc, and you can have many, many playlists to to play your video, especially if you have, say, a disc of music videos, you can have it uh, 30, 40 different playlists, and it would uh, just play the videos in that order. So it's a very powerful tool. Uh, menus are just like DVD menus. You'll have buttons. You click a button, it'll go to a timeline. It'll play a timeline or a playlist. Um, you can have... Um, alternate audio, alternate subtitles. Um, the menus, you can access, um, you can use those to access any part of your disc. And it's just like the menus on a DVD. It's the same type of thing. But here you create them yourself. Timelines, a timeline is a set of uh, video that when you play it and you play the entire time it'll go from the beginning to the end and then return to whatever you tell it to return to um, it doesn't have to be just a single video file you can have multiple video files on a timeline
but it's not like Premiere um, where you can uh, go through and add effects and other things. It's, uh, it's, um, so you can see I can change the size of it, but it's, that's the only thing that you can change about the video is the, uh, which part of it you want to keep for this timeline. So if you have one big long video, you can create a, a timeline with each chapter of the video and then, uh, you would basically just cut it down to the first chapter, the second chapter, the third, the fourth, fifth. And then you can create a playlist and you can have it play in random order if you want. Well, semi-random because you'll make a bunch of different playlists where you just, uh, move them all around and, and jumble them up and, but you, you'll have like 15, 20 different playlists and, and you can have it just play certain chapters or, um, certain pieces of video and that's what a timeline is it's basically one of these see there's multiple videos but it's only one video track there's never more than one video track here there's extra audio and subtitle tracks but there's never more than one video track on this timeline and then the build menu uh shows our three types of builds and it will uh, show you information about your build, your specific build. Um, let me go through some of these other ones up here, just so you have a an idea of uh, some of the stuff we're talking about. The title button uh, is what happens when somebody hits the title button on the remote, and it will. It's the main. Uh, menu that you have in your system then uh, your main timeline is obviously this one this is the only timeline that's in here so it's automatically the main timeline uh, first play first play is a video as you can see it's got this little icon up here with the uh, it looks like a a black disclosure triangle that designates what your first play item is and what that is, is as soon as you put the disc in, it will play that first. And then the end action, which is what it does when it's finished, the end action tells it which menu to go to. Or if you want to go to another timeline or another playlist, you can set it to go to one of those. It's normally, uh, if you watch a Hollywood video and they'll have um, trailers at the beginning, those are the first play items. They will play first and then it will go to the main menu, which is the end action. What to do when this, when this timeline ends. Uh, we only, we don't have any menus yet and we only have one timeline. So it's automatically the first play and the end action goes to nothing. It just stops. So, uh, that is. A little bit of the terminology as we go through and we uh, select and do other things we'll go over and talk about other terminology that applies in into uh, Encore 